Welcome back. It just keeps getting more and more exciting. I've glued, I've just glued these in and it was an absolute joy in the past if you remember the original ones. You'd have to have a piece of 10mm rod and have to get different heights set up and depths and this that and the other. Really tricky. Whereas this has just made it simple. They only fit into one particular gear so you can't get them mixed up. You just put drops of glue around the bottom, super glue, and then push the top bit, the acrylic down. It sticks perfectly with no glue anywhere. It is an absolute joy, right down to lining up because it's a hexagon now. It only fits on one way with the tooth in the hole lining up with the cutout. And again, that's just lovely. I suppose I could have made this a lopsided hexagon, but but no. And that's I mean just fabulous. So, what I'm getting ready to do now is paint. These bits are all together. I'm just going to sort out the other bits and pieces that need painting. What I just realised was there's this bit, the weight, the counterweight, that goes on to the AM and PM indicator. And obviously you don't want to paint that, because you want that's engraved, you want to see that. So I'm going to put, remove, I've removed this engraved bit because it's going to stick on the other side, that's so you won't see it. But I'm now going to replace that with a word saying bottom or something similar. Because when you paint this, you rest it that way up, you can paint all that, and then it'll leave the, the important side clear of paint when you glue it onto there. Little top tip, drawing pin, I hear you cry. Why do you need a drawing pin? Well... There's also the 3D printed pin that goes through here to follow on the cam, that cam. And again, how to paint it. Obviously you can't paint it there, it needs to be brass colour or whatever. So then what I thought was, use the amazing pillar drill chuck. Well, pillar drill and chuck, look at that. A chuck is an incredibly complicated and clever piece of engineering. The precision, the fact it'll grip something up to about 20 millimetres diameter, right down to one millimetre, that's a one millimetre drill bit. It's not incredible, absolutely amazing, the things you just take for granted normally. Oh yeah, Chuck, very clever. I've drilled a one millimetre hole in the end of this little 3D printed follower. I will change the design so it actually prints the hole instead. But the purpose of that is, are you with me? So now what I can do, trying not to look through the viewfinder because it's impossible, there, look. A bog standard drawing pin pushes in there, that now supports that, so you can spray it all round there, whoops a daisy, and it won't fall over, ho ho. My brain is a muscle, I can't remember what I'm doing now. No, well, that's right, yes, I took the dog out, so I was getting the net net throbble together with spinny things, nice. And I just realised, I don't think I'd mentioned this, that they had these spacers here, in fact you can see them there, they are made from piece of 5mm acrylic and then one of these little injection moulded black plastic tubes. And I was just getting everything ready for painting and thinking, hmm, it's a bit fiddly all this, resting these up, painting them all up and things, or possibly gluing them onto the top and then they might fall off. And then the wonderful 3D printer came to mind. It's a very rarely out of my mind, I have to say. So... Only 20 minutes. What have we got? Build on a minute. A couple of things. One very kind person on YouTube suggested that I could actually avoid having a raft by making a 0.4mm sort of conical chamfer. Oh, mine's going. Um, underneath it, just against the bed. So I'm going to try that, but I forgot this time. And the second thing I always forget is this is magnetic. You will know some of you when I discovered Revelation when the old one got absolutely scratched up, and I spent ages trying to work out how to clean it off, and found that you could just lift it. Oh, you idiot! And once, because it's flexible, it means that you can now very, very easily with. Oh, there we are. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Well, the last thing to try with that, get ahead of it, is whether an M3 screw will go through it. Have a look. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It's beautiful, I told you. I can't wait. I've, yeah, I'm going to get all these bits together that need painting, which I think I've now got, and then we'll paint them. Here are the bits that need to be painted. 
But as always, there's the spray booth with the um, barometric prognosticator sitting there because it won't sit anywhere else. But I have ordered the shed, which has arrived actually, a metal shed. And I decided rather than having a huge concrete base and lugging a load of sacks of cement and sand and all sorts around, I'm going to build a lovely clean wooden base for it which is very exciting and is arriving next Friday so a little bit longer to wait. So back onto the laser cutter for the umpteenth time. Oh and by the way this is available for purchase. Normally I make them just to order but um, when I was making the last one to order I thought I'd make two at the same time. So it is available. How exciting. As always Shake the paint for at least a minute, otherwise it might not work properly. I'm going to switch the top filter blower off. Da, da, da. First coat finished. It looks absolutely fabulous, even though I say so myself. Nothing blew over either, which is great, which can be a problem. That shifted a bit, but it's now okay. Everything stood up, even that little um, cam follower with the drawing pin in the bottom of it. Another day, both my camera and my own batteries have been fully recharged, which is lovely, so hopefully it'll help me to focus, even if my camera won't. Hey, thank you. Just making some more gauges up, because I've run out of some. These are the parts of the reciprocating chronograph that I've painted. I either only need one side painted, such as these parts, or both sides, but were standing up, so I could. That means the remaining four parts are sitting here. I'll spray the other sides. And do you remember, I, I mentioned, I was just thinking, how can I do this? Do I need pieces of stick? Do I need doweling? Do I need this? No. Spray one side, wait for it to set, and turn it over. Anything at all. So I'll give that a quick coat of paint. I've hoovered it, obviously. And I'll get back to you. Shiny. Ooh. The umming and ahhing has started already. Because I have been thinking about this, let me stand up. Now, obviously, we've got these. Here we are. Look, we've got these um, stainless steel rivets. They're actually 3.9 millimeter um, diameter because they clearance are, which is perfect. And they push into these holes and provide the lovely smooth perpendicular drive shafts for the gears and things. In fact, those gears and things on the transparent model um, and in this one in fact in this one I used um, what do you call it blue tack on the back it's been sitting working for ages I used blue tack just to hold them the, the rivets in see that's not particularly desirable in the original one that I painted I used super glue as always just to drip on the back to hold the shafts in and I remember earlier I think I said erring on the side of screwing things together rather than gluing things and I think my executive decision is because these are the four holes that need to have a rivet fixed into them I think I'm going to drill a hole up into each of these and down into that one and tap them and then have 4mm M4 grub screw in each one so that you can put it together. That means the back will look lovely, you won't have any glue, it means you can adjust it again or whatever. Now this drill, drill bit, is 3.3mm which is the, well, just gone into that one, which is the diameter that you drill a hole before tapping it with an M4 um, tap. Luckily I found though my Draper magnetic um, rubber covered jaws fit onto the horrible machine vise. Excellent. I've also had a cunning plan. This is a 4mm drill, so I'm drilling halfway down the O. Oops, just going to drill halfway down. So I've got 3.3, come on folks, 3.3mm hole there, 4mm here. That'll speed up the tapping. Also, the tap's not that long, so it'll allow it to reach the actual important bit, and also mean that you don't have to spend ages threading a grub screw all the way through. You can get halfway through, and then it'll start biting. Loads of benefits. I've also, really excitingly, sold another of the mechanical picture frames. Stop getting the reflections. 
Look, 3D mechanisms, lovely stained, polished wooden surround, even some ball chain, a little flickering flame effect, try and get it to catch the light, sort of. 3D printed shell lamps, they say, and even some copper pipe. Lovely, I'll well, get that packaged up. And the gauge finishes, finished, and the hills drilled. Oh, and while I think of it, thank you so much to those people who commented in the comments um, after my query about how long I should make the videos and whether I should be shorter, saying, no, please keep them the right this length because we like to see how you actually achieve things. And it's really nice to hear that because um, that's what I'm sort of aiming for, to help support and inspire other people. So thank you very much for your kind comments. Greatly appreciated. It makes everything really worthwhile. It makes me very enthusiastic, so thank you. And now I'm going to do the fun part of starting to glue pieces together. These pieces don't need gluing together because they're all going to screw or fix on somehow or other. But these pieces can be... My first job is the um, chain. Here's a piece of beautifully small brazed chain. Fabulous. I've used it on lots of machines. That, if you remember, if you've seen the previous videos, zoink. Having armed and awed about needing some way of pulling the hour hand over to the left constantly to take up any slack in all the gears, the first thing I tried was to have a little piece of chain that runs down over a bearing to a weight of some sort. Worked perfectly, worked a treat. Obviously, then I had to go and try and overcomplicate it and do all sorts of things from laser cut plastic springs that didn't work to gears with counterweights that, well, you can see actually. <laughs> Ridiculous. On this one. Look at all this. Oh, I'll find a simple way of doing it, rather than a piece of um, chain and a uh, uh, bearing. Have two more gears, look, with counterweights on them and all sorts of other stuff. Ridiculous. So, I've come back to a piece of chain, because I think it looks lovely. I don't know why I've decided to change it. I have got lots of this chain, the brass ball chain, which is fabulously useful for um, things like the climatic revelator because you can use it as a drive chain and it'll change directions through any axes. Because I redesigned this I can now theoretically in order to really, it's one of those things that it's easy to forget how to fix a piece of chain in, it's not a big job. Drop it in there I can then see it through the hole in the middle that only goes so deep, I can now drip a piece of super glue in that, a piece of super glue, if you will, um, and it'll seal it in really firmly and not run anywhere and not do anything annoying. What a joy. A little drip in there, that's setting that nicely. Look at this. Oh, now, now we're talking. Oh, it just looks so nice. Just held that in dripped a couple of glue drops of glue in the back, it ran round, Bob's your uncle, no glue on the front, perfectly sealed. I'm about to do the same thing Woo. with this. There's the lens, and because I was handling it yesterday, wittering on about it, it was covered in my grease, filthy greasy hands, and as you know, having watched previous videos, if you put super glue anywhere near, even the most latent of fingerprints, a white mist appears, sticks really really firmly to the uh, the remains of the fingerprint. So I'm wearing my gloves and I have just cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol and this just pushes beautifully in there. I'm so, look at that, it's flush at the back. So now I'm going to switch the camera off because I, if I try and put a couple of drips of super glue around the edge of this with a camera on, it'll be a catastrophe. I'll get back to you. The other thing I need to do so I've got to glue this in, so that goes into a, a rebate on the other side and there are six little holes around here through which to drip glue again. So hold that in place on the other side, so I'll get that done as well. Heavens to Betsy, talk about discovering the depths of the drawers of invisibility, going back in time in effect. As I said, this clock has been in development for four years and I knew I had some more of these. 
beautiful red spirit levels. The actual inserts. I suspected, I remember four years ago, that I, I, I thought this clock needed something down here. Where's the other? Oh, here we are. It needed a gap or something. It needed something to fill that, preferably red, to balance the red gem on the other side. And I was arming and ahhing about it, thinking it needs some sort of purpose, sort of, and came up with the idea of a lovely spirit level, assuming that it would be possible to get red ones. And I remember talk about a huge stint on Googling. I eventually found a company, and I'm really hoping that um, it's remembered the email information or something on the computer, so I know where to order them from, because it took months, not constantly, but months of Googling on that occasion to find the company that actually sold these, and they're lovely. And that's why there's that hole there. That will glue into that really nicely and look interesting. Oh, I've got that glued together. There we are. So the clock face there, the beautiful shiny clear glass, well, plastic lens. I've got that glued on to the AM PM thing with the uh, little 3D printed pin, chains set, gem on the front of that. Right, and I think while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'm going to get a couple of bases made. So I found a nice piece of wood, I can't remember what I was using for. It's about 80 millimeters this way, which is great. I think it's gonna look nice, and 210 the other way. And a little bit of judicial sanding. Let's talk about routing. Here's a router. Quite an old router, actually. It's my only router, and I've had it for years. The idea is, is that it spins incredibly fast. And you have a chuck at the bottom, and inside the chuck, if that's at all visible, you have a router cutter. And this is the, the ginger, well, I'll show you actually. You get all sorts of different shapes. We have vertical cutters, so you could actually follow a pattern or something. Cut out, these are often used to cut out um, the cutouts for sinks and things in work surfaces, or finer ones than that, even still. And they basically spin very fast. They've got a tungsten carbide cutter or something even harder, whatever that may be on the side. Here's a very useful one. It's got a bearing, they're so useful, the ones with bearings. I use this one to route a disc, a rebate around a hole that I cut when I've been building the clocks. In fact, I'm gonna be using that soon because um, Erin, the truck driver in America, recently got back to me saying she has finally had her door, the door that is going to support the time zone clock, steampunk time zone clock finished so I can now find out the size and get on with that so I will be using that through to this sort of thing which is similar to the one I'm going to use today. The ones with bearings on, brilliant because it means the edge of a piece of material can guide it. You get cheap ones that don't have bearings, they have a little bit of metal sticking out but they're awful and they tend to burn the material and all the rest but a little bearing on the end. You also get ones with varying bearings so if you had a slightly smaller bearing for example on that one then it would cut this end rebate, but at the moment it would just curve an external cut an external radius on it. Yeah, and all sorts of other ones. So I'm going to use this one because it's a newish one. And you set the height between, and I've set it, so I'm not going to unset it, but loosen that. All routers have some sort of feature like this, and then you can raise or lower the distance basically between the material and the cutter. You can also, and I did build one, build something because I've got to say the easiest way of using a router is if it's mounted like that with a bed on it, a nice big flat piece of wood or whatever, and then this spins around with a guard or something, and then you move the material over the cutter. Fantastic, so much easier, but having made one, I may have unmade it and turned it into something else. I can't find it, so anyway, what I've done instead there's the piece, one of the pieces of wood that I've sanded, and I've just screwed it through the two holes I'm going to need to screw the clock on into a scrap piece of wood. Then what I'm going to do, oh, I haven't seen this for a very long time, this is the spray booth underneath. 
the Black & Decker workmates and the extractor fan. So I'm going to sit this here. Luckily, well, the distance here is less than the distance here. So that means with this clamp firmly down, I can then route around the edge just using this as the guide, which is great. That's the joy of having a cutter with a bearing on because it's very difficult to get it wrong and that's absolutely perfect now just standing over it sliding it along keeping it level brilliant the cutter can't go any deeper because of the bearing lovely I'll get the other one done the other nice thing you can do with a router if you're using it freehand and you've got some sort of cutter like that is you can cut lettering text onto things Oops wooden things. Like for example this bookcase that I made from old recycled science tables a long time ago and thought that I worked out it was hardwood and obviously it was very old because they take so long to grow so I tried to work out calculate from the rings the diameter of the rings when it was sewn when it was felled which was pretty easy because it was in the 1950s when they were building lots of secondary schools and then it became a table then and then a bookcase oh, look, 2002 and that lettering was just done by printing it out on paper sticking it on with masking tape and then just cutting along it freehand with the router because it's got two nice big handles so it's pretty easy to steer and to guide you get really good results and there's my lovely dog spending the day energetically guarding the bookcase that noise is just the uh, barometric prognosticator, the original one, ringing out the hour and playing the weather tune. Lovely. On well, today's viewing pleasure, three film collection, John Grisham, The Client, The Pelican Brief and A Time to Kill. Very good stories, stop reflecting. Right, now then. Also just thinking about whether I should include a lovely cotton glove with the kit. I think I will, and possibly even an Allen key of the right size. The sort of thing where I want people without any specialist equipment to be able to build these and to really enjoy building them, so I think I might. Talk about design development, so many changes already, and I've only got this far. I have decided or discovered that the clock movement wouldn't fit into the surrounding it was just too tight spot on but I need to add a millimetre around it so that's one thing I have to file it away carefully and like working out how to line it up and things I'm making notes on how I'm assembling it put this together and forgot that I hadn't put the little chain bearing on and realised that had to be countersunk from the back so that the AMPM mechanism couldn't knock into it no, that's right, and also my screwdriver slipped just as I was tightening this thing on the side, so I've had to sand it and respray that. Oh joy! I've just put my first screw or grub screw fixed rivet in, and it's worked perfectly. I'm using the metallic card spacer like I've used with the Memnet Thrubble, in fact, with all the kits actually. You put that on, just push it finger tight, and then tighten it up in whatever way you're doing it, with glue or whatever. Look at that. Well, I've just got back from taking the dog for a walk, a well earned walk after a restful day got in the bookcase, and I've dropped all the videos so far onto the video editor, and I found I've got enough for another video. So, thank you very much for watching, as always. So, we've got to that stage now, and then tomorrow I'm going to start working on the next bits and pieces. Slightly disturbing, these copious notes written in very, very small lettering. Reminiscent perhaps of some serial killer, like on um, Seven or something. Yes, perhaps I'll have to start writing a little bit bigger. That might be a good idea. Remember to click, click, remember to click, click, remember to click subscribe and like if you have. Hope to see you next time.